Hey guys, Jeff Warner here. I'm the Digital Imaging Lead for Creative and Digital Services, and today I'm going to be discussing some do's and don'ts in regards to video capture. I know a lot of us are working from home and we still want to get messages out to the campus and to the student body, so whether you're posting to social media or hosting a webinar, these practices will ensure you cultivate the best content possible. First, let me begin by saying that everything that I'm utilizing in this video capture, I found at home. There are no professional tools being utilized. I did that on purpose so you can emulate these techniques for yourself. When I'm done conducting this interview, I'm actually going to flip the camera around and show you exactly how I have it set up. First, and very important, is lighting. Right now, I'm in my living room with my sliding glass door to my left, allowing that natural light to hit my face. I also have a light propped up hitting the right side of my face. You're going to want as much light on you as possible. It's going to feel odd, but trust me, the footage and the lens will appreciate the more light that's on you. Also, in regards to lighting, if you do wear glasses and do decide to utilize lights during your video capture, sometimes there'll be a glare. So if you absolutely don't need to wear them during your video capture, I would recommend you not. Another important element for your video capture is the audio. Right now, I'm in a very secluded place. There's no TV playing in the background. There's no chit chat. This will ensure your viewership stays engaged from beginning to end. You want as clean an audio as possible. You'll also notice that I have a score accompaniment during this video. There's nothing like a nice little score accompaniment to keep your narrative cohesive and to deliver the type of tone you're trying to deliver to your viewership. Next, I'd like to talk about framing. So right now, I've got the camera almost parallel to my eye line. This is important because if the camera lens was too high or too low, it could generate an odd angle in regards to your person. We call this shot the cowboy shot. It goes from your waist all the way up to about a foot above your head. And what's great about this is while your top might look professional, you can wear jams. <laughs> wear jam jams. <laughs> Another great thing about this shot is, you know, the top is business as usual, but the bottom is sweatpants. And so as I'm sure you've also noticed, there are elements in the background. As long as you are the subject in focus, it's actually okay that there are elements in the background. It's actually a little weird if you have nothing but a blank white wall. Next is the kind of hardware you're utilizing, right? Whether you're using the webcam that's on your laptop or the camera lenses on your phone. Traditionally, the lenses on the back of the phone are significantly stronger than the camera on the front. So if you do have help or do have someone that can assist you with the framing and hitting the record button, I would elicit their help. Also in regards to hardware, if you're utilizing things like your, what is that thing called? Shirt. No. <laughs> the earbud. If you are concerned about audio or ambient noise interfering with your video capture, you can use things like your earbuds with the microphone, which would be closer to your mouth and ultimately would record cleaner audio. Also, headphones could be used if you want to hear exactly what's being recorded. Last is post-production. There are an array of apps that will actually let you edit footage directly from your phone, like Adobe Rush. There's also software for your PCs or Macs, like Adobe Premiere, Final Cut, Avid. Ultimately, they all do the same thing, and in regards to cutting, really what it comes down to is timing and cultivating those best moments from your footage. Also, in regards to post-production, you may have noticed that I have two angles running at the exact same time. This is extremely important when you get into the editing room in case you flub a line or are trying to in case you flub a line or try to, you know, in case you flub a line like this, <laughs> in case you flub a line or get choked up on words, two angles will allow you to cut around that and really shape your narrative to the strongest content. Another useful tip is if you record your resolution in 4K, what you can do then is hide cuts by actually punching in. So when you're posting YouTube or to Instagram, ultimately the best kind of file type is what's called a .mp4. Basically what that means is that it has a codec of an H.264. And a codec is basically the line of code that basically wraps your video or tells other programs how to view it. If you are posting to YouTube or to Instagram, I would recommend you export and or set your phone settings to only record .mp4s or .moves. The factory settings on most phones will generate a file type or a video type that actually is actually a smaller file but less conducive to editing. So. I would go through your settings on your phone and ensure that you are generating an MP4, a dot move, or at least that it has an H.264 codec. So that's pretty much it when it comes to capturing yourself at home. If you have any questions or concerns, please shoot me a call or shoot me an email and I'll work you through it. Stay safe and be healthy.